Danny, what's going on, man? Stu, what is going on? Cheers. Cheers, cheers. Hopefully everybody's doing well. Mom, what's going on? Smooth being in the building. Tim, what is going on? Herbie, G3, what is going on? Hopefully everybody is good. Been a crazy past couple of days. Mike, what is going on? Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. So, uh, as you guys, I see some people are already doing, man. If you uh, would be so gracious as to smash the like or dislike button on your way in. Janice, what is going on? My sister. Shirt, what's going on? Matt, what is going on? Jermaine, Milwaukee P in the building. DJ Nas, what is going on? I appreciate you guys. Marvin, what is going on? Uh, I appreciate that, man. So as you guys know, um, or some people are, are stating in the chat, if you don't know, we welcome the arrival of my daughter uh, on the 8th, around 8 o'clock in the morning. So she is doing good. Mom is doing good. Everybody is, is great. Really like her personality already. I feel like she's definitely more me. Uh, she's a lot more laid back and chill. So I, hopefully that that stays like that. But you know how things can change. But uh, that is what we are looking at so far. <laughs> James, you wouldn't be yourself, man, without without making any comments. But no, I'm uh, I'm I'm definitely happy to have her along the journey. So not gonna be up here incredibly long, man. As you guys know, I it's, uh, in the past two days, I think I've had two cigars and those were two cigars late last night. So I haven't really been smoking a lot. Um, like I said, we're still working on cigar madness. So just kind of giving you guys a heads up. There's not going to be a whole lot of content before March, probably because the content that we'll be trying to catch up on and get caught up on is cigar madness. We got a few reviews in the can that'll probably be released. Of course, I might do some periodic live streams, stuff like that too. And then, um, I'll be reviewing the the new New Era unit that came out or that's coming out. I think you guys have probably seen a couple of reviews of it already. So I'll give my take on it. I'm sure before now and then you'll see some other people that have gotten the unit too. But, you know, some people like looking at certain people's content. So it is what it is. So far, I don't have any complaints, though. It's pretty much a set it and forget it kind of deal. Holds quite a few cigars. It's a really nice thing. But uh, also, on top of the news of my daughter arriving, I also want, I'm sure, I don't know if they're here, but they probably will catch the playback. James is in here too. But I also wanted to welcome aboard Robert and Caesar officially for uh, becoming a members or becoming members of the Black Line Luxuries team. So, again, if anybody is watching me, man, and you guys are not subscribed to Robert and Caesar over there, smoking lid, make sure you guys give them a follow, show them some, show them some support. Uh, they're giving they're giving their trust in me and James and Nick over here at Black Line Luxuries. They could be working with anybody. So I'm very appreciative of that. Really excited for what they have planned and what they got going on with James, too. And, um, I, you know, me, I'm just completely happy with watching the family expand out and just watching things grow because not only do things get better for me, but they get better for James. They get better for now Robert and Caesar. They get better for anybody that wants to attach themselves to the family. So. It's a completely organic experience for me. I'm already really, really big fans of them. Me and Caesar and Rob talk quite often. And uh, I, I actually like that they're with us now, too, because you're getting two different kind of dynamics where you got me. and You know, my channel and my style is completely different than what Robert and Caesar have to offer, which I think is great because, you know, you don't want a lot of people doing a lot of the same things because then you start to question, well, why do I have you if I have run or why do I have you if if I have smoke and lead, they do the same kind of thing. So, you know, just want to give a big shout out to uh, both of those guys, man. I, I can see it in their faces. They're excited. I'm genuinely excited, too. So I'm really, really excited. I'm sure on top of the projects that they have going with uh, James, I'm going to be doing some things with them, too, in the future, too. We'll we'll get creative and think of some ways to, to incorporate them into my channel. And then I'm sure we'll be doing some stuff, too, maybe some live streams and stuff like that. But so... We got enough people in here now. I'm a, like I said, I'm not going to be up here too long. I'm gonna smoke through, probably try to smoke through at least half of whatever I smoke. But you guys, give me uh, y'all put in the comments what do y'all want to see me smoke? I have the Supreme Leaf Corona Gorda, or I have the uh, Rare Leaf and Robusto. So y'all give me a y'all put in the comments what y'all want to see me smoke, and I'll light it up and answer a few questions while I'm up here. Rare Leaf Supreme. Appreciate you, David Cigar Man. What's going on? For real, what's going on? AM, anybody, anybody that I missed, man, 
appreciate you guys for tuning in to the uh, stream. Rare, rare, uh, C2 for Supreme, Boosto Supreme. Rare, Supreme, rare, 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 Supreme. Rare, rare. It looks like, we, all right, it looks like we're going to jump on the rare leaf. Rare leaf it is. It got a lot of rares in here. So we, uh, I will look this up real quick now. So the, um, the Agonorsa Supreme Leaf in, in its entirety is more Corojo 99 dominant. So you're going to have a little bit more mouthwatering, a little bit more sweetness is what they advertise. The Rare Leaf is more Criollo 98. So it's going to be more earthy, a little bit more pepper in there. This is actually the size I was really excited about too. So this is the Robusto. Camera's not as great, but you guys see it. I like the labels nice and clean. Of course, you guys know I like Agonorsa products, but you know we'll, we'll be honest here like as always. So the Robusto is a five and a half by 52. He got you. It looks like a. Double cap, but it's kind of sloppy. There's one big cap and you can see kind of a secondary cap. Leaf's actually kind of dark, man. It looks nice, though. The labels are nice and clean. Not too much coming off the body, just more uh, tobacco. All right, let's see what we got. Palette should be good. Like I said, I haven't been smoking nowhere near the amount of cigars that I, I usually smoke, which is cool. You know, I don't, it is what it is. Nothing too out of the ordinary from what I get from most Nicaraguan cigars. Still getting the, that light fudginess, some pepper on there, some earth. Pretty much it. So we'll see what we got. David unsweetened all this stuff. Uh, I actually do. So I'm gonna be honest with you guys. So long story short, I do have, I actually have one Padron 85th in my humidor. It's been there forever. My uh, grandfather passed away two years ago. He was 85 years old. Was planning on doing a review, a tribute review for him, but just haven't gotten around to do it yet. But you know, it is what it is, and. Uh, at some point, I will smoke that. Now, for for the daughter's birth, I'm gonna smoke something else, and then I'm a I'm gonna grab a bottle of Old Forester birthday bourbon. Is uh, you guys know I used to be a really big bourbon fan, so still drink bourbon, just not as much as I used to. So I got a bottle from Quincy's birth year, and then I'll be grabbing a bottle for uh, my daughter's birth year too. So that way, when they turn 21, I'll be able to crack the bottle open with them and share a glass of whiskey. All right. So you answer. <laughs> Mystical. <laughs> T-shirt guy, I've never tasted that before. I don't even think you can. That's the oxymoron. I don't think that's possible. Uh, Garden of Farm Night Watch just picked this up today. Shay Ron Maduro. Sharp, what's really weird about that is I'm not a fan of the Night Watch. I, and so at first, when I smoked their cigar at first, and then I smoked the Signature Selection Maduro, which has that same wrapper on it. And it made me think that I didn't like that Corojo Shade Ron Maduro. But then I smoked the Miami Anniversario Cuban, uh, Cuban 109. I really liked it. Then I went back and revisited the Maduro of the Signature Selection over time and really, really enjoyed it. I smoked a few Night Watches, still not a huge fan of it. But trust me, um, Ash Head, Cigar Junkie, uh, there's quite a few people that really, really love that Night Watch. AD, what's going on, man? Congrats on hitting that 100 subscribers too, man. Finished the Cuban Monte Cristo number five, not bad. It's a rare leaf on the way. Hit that again, y'all have to excuse me. Anthony, I appreciate it, man. And it dropped me down a couple of notes, man. So while we while we were sitting here chatting.
All right, so initially I just wanted to get a few puffs in, give them some black pepper, give them some nice earth. The black pepper is not, it's really nice. It's not going to bother the sinuses unless you're not really used to retrohaling. Getting a little bit of a natural tobacco sweetness in there. For a second, I thought I was tasting a little ginger, but I'm not sure. It was kind of there on that second draw. That's why I wanted to make sure I took another draw or two before I made sure that that's what I was tasting. It's another, it's a sweetness there too. I can't put my finger on it, but it's so far not bad. Just try Ali Bradley Black Magic. I liked it. I can't remember if I had that one. If you uh hot topics, if you haven't checked out the review of the uh the latest review I did of Ali Bradley was the Kintsugi. I thought it was a phenomenal cigar. So definitely check that cigar out if you have not. Um I think it's pretty good. I think you should give it a look. Not very bad on the wallet either. Yeah, I can't put my finger on that sweetness flavor, but it's nice, though. I'm, I'm liking it so far. Right now, it's smoking medium um, body and flavor. And I said there's a nice, if you're used to medium to full, full body, it's a nice black pepper sting right there. But it's not bad, though. It's not making you tear up or anything. It's Definitely getting some earth on the finish. Which Cowboy, shout out to Cowboy too. He made a very good point. I can't remember what video it was. It wasn't too long ago. And he made a very good point. He's like, he made a, a notation that a lot of people don't like earthiness in cigars, but that kind of comes with the territory. Now, I mean, not something overly earthy, but I feel like earth is kind of something that's the necessary evil. Almost like if you drink bourbon, it's just a, a charry oak taste that's kind of going to be in there that you got to, you got to kind of, it comes with the territory. So, Earthiness for me, you don't run from it unless it's like nothing else going on. But some earthiness in there when it's complemented with other flavors actually for me works really well. I like it. I, I'm more like, again, with wines and tannins and stuff like that. I, I understand what's going on and I, and I can have grown to appreciate it. Big Rocco, I appreciate that, man. Hey, Ron, I saw you have many boxes stored in your humidor. Do you keep them sealed or do you op open the boxes to allow for humidification? Rocco, it actually really all depends. However, I bought them is usually how I keep them. So the plastic, just like cellophane on a cigar, is permeable. So it's able moisture is able to get in and get out of it, just how it's designed. So technically, think about it. Have you ever been in a humidor where you've looked it up top or on the bottom and you see this box of cigars? It's eight or nine years old. Super old box of cigars. You take off the plastic wrapping and open it. The cigars look in pristine shape. Everything is breathable. <clears throat> the cedar wood from the boxes, the cellophane, the plastic. So it's really just a real preference thing, unless I would say... Unless you're dry boxing the cigars, you take it out of the cellophane so the, the dry boxing period can happen faster. But other than that, for me, I've always been whatever, uh, whatever, however it comes, is usually how I leave it. Now, the only other the only other thing I'll mention about that, too, is. Uh, a lot of times you may want to take it out of the plastic. A lot of people will do it just so they can check the cigars to make sure that they're not don't have any mold or anything on them or any cracking but on those supreme leaves it shouldn't have been a mold issue right so the cigars were so new so on a couple of them they had the plastic steel and i uh i just left them like this but i appreciate the donation man Yeah, so far, this is really nice, man. It's not bad at all, as you guys can see. Now, this one is burning uh, fine. The only thing sometimes I'll knock on them on Aganorsa, even though you got, and this is no shade, you guys know I love Aganorsa, but anybody that anybody will tell you that's being honest, um, the Supreme Leafs, especially the Toros, they came in really wet. So the burns weren't the greatest on them. And sometimes the signature selection, some of the other uh, Aganorsa, the burn lines aren't 
razor sharp to like a Padron standard, but the flavors are always there. The draws are really solid. So that's what I was saying here. It's not like a razor sharp burn, but this is pretty much a standard for Aganorsa burn for me. This, and this is nothing that I'm going to knock, you know. I'm going to pick that flavor in a minute. Herbie, appreciate the donation. Congrats again. I got to get her some stillish stuff. Don't do that, Herbie. Don't do not do that. Don't do not do that. I, I love you. I love you, brother, but don't do that because I'm not going to I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to burn it or anything, but it's going to go in the attic and it's just going to get stored up there. And uh, I got some friends that are stillish fans and that's that's who is going to end up going. Don't do that, Herbie. Don't don't do that. And I don't even like I don't hate the stillish, but, you know. She's going to be like her brother, man. We are uh, Colts fans in here. Uh, that's true. I have issues with the burn on Supremely, but the flavor is so good that I give it a pass. And that and that's true, too. That's why I was going to say. Anybody that smoked a lot of Agonorsa stuff will tell you, really, the one thing, if, if you don't like their flavor profile, uh, the you you can sometimes knock the burn. The burns aren't like razor sharp, like a Davidoff or Padron or like some, uh, my, you know, like some of the standards that we got used to. But, you know, somebody else, I can't remember who said it. But they made a really good point, too. Sometimes it's not bad to relight and touch it up to make you really remember that you're smoking a hand roll product. So I think sometimes we get so spoiled on stuff, especially as far as reviewing it. You know, if I'm out in the yard or just doing some general speaking, I don't care if I have to hit a touch up or anything like that. But, you know, you guys know with the um, cigar madness, every little thing matters because that's because sometimes the cigars are right there with each other. And so you need every little thing to separate, separate each other. Tim, don't do that. D don't do that. Don't send no pack of stuff either. Thank you, Prudence. Now I'm starting to pick up a little bit of brown sugar. It's still another sweetness in there. The earth and pepper have died down a little bit. They're not as intense as they were in the beginning. Now I'm starting to get that brown sugar. There's still another sweetness in there, too. The finish is not bad. It's not super long, not drying my palate out or anything. I'm James, I'm kind of leaning towards that, but I'm just trying to be sure because there's it's so much kind of stuff jumping around, but that's kind of where I was leaning it. Good smoke output, good draw. Yeah, I'm going to say the brown sugar is more there upon exhalation of the smoke, but more so on the finish. It's going to be more of a cocoa powder, but it's not a super, super intense cocoa. It's very subtle. This is one of these cigars I'm going to say right now. I wouldn't really pair it with any alcohol. I would want to, as you guys know, I'm not I'm not drinking anything, but if I did, it'd be water, especially for the first pass. So when you guys are smoking this for the first time, try to give it a real run. Don't don't. Block it with anything else. Just smoke it for what it is. Thomas, appreciate that donation, man. What is a underused flavor note in cigars and an underrated cigar brand worth checking out? Underused flavor note? So I think I kind of, you know, kind of what I was just talking about. I think we mentioned Earth, but I think sometimes people don't realize that Earth ties into a lot of things, right? Or a nice coffee note. A nice coffee note is kind of, it's stated, but I don't think people really want really give enough information that where the coffee note lies in with the finish or how it ties in, you know, how you get that dryness, but it tastes good, but it makes you want to, it, 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 it doesn't dry your palate out, but it leaves a dryness enough to make you want to take another draw of the cigar. Underrate, underrated cigar brand, everybody knows here. I'm a big HVC fan, big Illusione fan. Illusione has been around for over 15 years. I think they started in 06, somewhere in there, 06, 07. So, been around for about 15 years really they they have a lot of good awards they put out a lot of great cigars especially if you're used to smoking cuban cigars i don't know what you normally smoke but if you're a uh, cuban cigar smoker check out the illusion the illusion a Ypernay line also hvc is another brand that i would say is a that needs some attention highlighted to it and uh shout out to uh matt newman too man he was or he left a comment on one of the more recent videos. I think the parent video that me and Jeff were from Yorkshire Liquors were doing. And he was saying that he was surprised somebody was smoking 
one on camera and I'm like, man, I, again, like I'm not going to smoke anything I don't like, you know, like if you saw my humidor tour, <laughs> you know, I'm not just blowing smoke. Like I, I like HVC cigars. Like my whole, most of my top shelf is HVC stuff. Like I like HVC. I'm not just pushing a product that smoke this stuff. So, you know, but I, you know, I understand where he's coming from. No, I mean, especially with all the stuff that's been going on recently, but you know, it is what it is. Jerome, what's going on, man? Also getting a little bit of a floral note in there too. It's really slight too. So this for, I can tell right now, recommendation for anybody that's going to smoke this cigar. I'm sure this is going to be really popular along with the Supreme Leaf. This, this, this feels like a Jordan release, a Michael Jordan shoe release. I recommend for you guys when you're smoking it, don't pair anything with it. Just sit down, get some quiet time and pay attention to the cigar. Cause I think this has a lot of nuances in it. It's, it's just a really, and it tastes good. You can just tell when the tobacco is fermented well, man. Definitely a slight floral note on it too. <clears throat> Yeah, Milwaukee P. I, I think so too. The Fume is another one. So the Fume de Amora and the uh Ypernay, their lines in the and that and that again, that to me shows the dedication and the just the, the knowledge that Dion has. He's able to blend these cigars without any Lihero in it. Again, every now and then you might have a burn issue, but they taste great, man. And, and like us and like uh Mystical was saying, if the flavor is so on, if the flavor is so on point, especially off camera. Man, I don't care if I have to do two or three touch-ups if that flavor is staying good. Because for me, even though I like more medium to full, full-body cigars, flavor for me is most important. Flavor's got to be good. Slick, I appreciate the donation, brother. Congratulations. Buy a little mama something for me, bro. I do that. I, hey, uh, Tim, Cigar Show Tim, Slick 50. That's another uh, cheese head, man. Another, another big Packer fan. I like what you're doing too, Slick, man. Like I said, Slick is another good guy, man. If you guys are into boxing, uh, he does a lot of just current event topics. I like Slick because for me, I like I like to as much cigar content as I watch. I like to really break up my day and try to let my brain breathe a little bit. So Slick will pop in. He'll start talking about boxing, which I'm a fan of boxing, uh, current events. Then, I like I, I told you guys before, I watch a lot of uh, fragrance channel. I watch a lot of stuff, man. So. And I and I try to read a lot too. I just try to try to free my brain up a little bit where it's not all cigars. So definitely check him out, man. If you're into boxing and uh you want a good channel to follow, check out Slick 50, man. I always have burn issues with the Supreme Leaf. And that's what I was gonna say, Devo. Just being completely honest, that's probably gonna be really the main knock for people. If they if you like the flavors, but you knock something on it, it's gonna be the burn. So Bruce, what's going on, brother? I don't complain about touch-ups as long as the cigar is good. Everything for me. So what I will say about this cigar, too. Appreciate that, too, JP. What I will say about this cigar, too, in one word, if I'm going to say it so far, is just a nice balance. It's not really super intense. It's not really weak. It's just everything is just blended together. I'm going to have to do some more reading and find out. I'm going to try to find out if Max is behind this blend too, because Max learned from one of the, uh, one of the giants that, that uh, a lot of people don't talk about, but uh, Arsenio Ramos, he passed away in 2018. He learned from him and Arsenio was actually born in Cuba, worked a lot with Cuban cigars. So he knows a lot. He probably knows about more about tobacco than most of your other people that you're going to know about. And Max, who is uh, Eduardo's son, Eduardo owns Agonor, so Max is his son. He learned how to blend cigars under him. For me, that would be a dream to be able to work with Max and just, you know, work over there. Because it would, for me, that's the dream, right? Because that's the factory that I really like a lot of stuff that comes out of. I like how they blend. It, that's what most resonates with my palate. And it's, it's not just me. There are a lot of companies that use this stuff too, man. So I'm just happy that they decided to start putting out cigars under their own name instead of just selling all their tobacco but max man he I, i'm pretty sure he's probably behind his blend too but he's, he's knocking it out of the park as usual this is just a really balanced cigar i think this will be pretty approachable for most people so far strength 
I'm not really detecting a whole lot of strength. Big T, what's going on, brother? Coco starting to move from the, the back, starting to come to the front. Pepper's still there, but it's just not, it's, like I said, it's not as intense. You're still getting some earth. On the finish now, it's more so, I would say, of a light oak wood. Jerome, you know, uh, you already know the source, man. Black line. I don't, I don't know how much, I don't know how much is over there now, but I know uh, James posted publicly about the rare leaf and supreme leaf the other day. So I don't know what's going on. You know that, you know how that stuff is. That stuff moves quick, man. Ah, right, what's going on, brother? I bought a box of crown his warriors and scored their head. Excellent, man. You know what I say it too. I've used to mess with. John all the time. Uh, they make the best hats in the game, and that Warriors is a, is a nice, nice cigar. Too, what size did you buy in it? Smoking the diesel Esteli Puro. People were sleeping on the cigar, but it's a winner. Billy the All Star, what's going on? Uh, me too, man. You know, I, like I said, so far and for and, and even knowing where you're at, because I think me and you for the most part like that that really pungent, strong pepper power. This is a cigar I still think you're gonna really appreciate because the flavors. The flavors are there, and I got quite a quite a few cigar, uh, quite a bit of cigar left. So I don't know where that strength is going to lie at right now. It's not really high right now, but the flavors are really nice. Getting some cocoa powder, black pepper, some earth, a little oak wood on that finish. I was picking up a little floral that's kind of died back some too. Yeah, about the same as what I was just saying. Carolina Bees, what's going on, man? Um, they might. You have to. You'll have to check on the website. I know James posted the information yesterday, but you know how the people that, that I'm telling y'all it's like Jordans when they release when people want some and they see them, they be waiting and they. I'm not sure what I'm not sure what it's looking like right now, but I will go over there and check it out and and see. Do you save cigar bands and throw them out? Uh, I, I've been saving them for the past probably year or so before then not really i have saved some i got some in the jar over here it's it's kind of one of the things if i remember to do it i'll do it but i throw if i'm not at home i'll throw them out it's not really i take a lot of pictures about of things and then you know knock on wood you know god granted i, I keep my memory <clears throat> as i move up in age but i i could look at something and pretty much remember if i had it and pretty much remember what my experience was with it because like i said right most cigars for me are average or an average is just a bad word but good and then you have the few remarkable ones then you have the few you remember because it's like it's a bad cigar james me and james were talking about a potential cigar for the club not too long ago and as soon as he mentioned the name i remembered it was a bad cigar and i was like no it's a trash cigar i don't want that in the club you know so and we moved on to the next subject Not bad so far. Not bad. Got our traditional Agonorsa burn going, but nothing bad. All I will say on that too, I see, like I said, I've seen a lot of smokers do it. Make sure you guys are taking your time when you're smoking. Especially a lot of times, if you aren't careful, you'll see you'll start getting mouse holes or canoeing. If you just take your time and slow back down smoking, it'll catch yourself up. Sometimes people get so caught up, and sometimes I, I admit it, I'm that, I'm that way too. I like something so much I'll just I'll just start chain smoking and not even realizing it. So you just have to slow down. Pepper on this one Oc, is not super intense. It was really intense in the first probably five draws. And it wasn't intense like you know, eye watering, but it was there. It was like, hey, we got some black pepper here. And then it just kind of slowly died down. Then it's just like a nice little symphony of flavors going on. Black pepper's there in that back end with that oak wood kind of tying everything, keeping everything held together. The cocoa on this is really nice, though. It's moved from that finish up to the front. Starting to get a slight creaminess. And it's not the texture of the smoke. It's a very light taste in the creaminess. It's very light. <laughs> nah, Hero, this is the uh, the Crown Heads Warriors 
had they did a rift off of you know the well you know you know what it's a rift off of but I thought it was pretty cool get a lot of compliments on it. Do you remember the first cigar you smoked? I did it was a uh, Macanudo Maduro. It was a very mild cigar, especially and that so that kind of breaks in the monotony of what people think of Maduro when they look at it. They think the Maduro dark cigar is strong, but that cigar is very very mild. I re I remember that much. I you know I smoked that first cigar and it didn't it didn't beat me down like the My Father Leapy Zoo did. Like I was telling the story on the live stream with Kevin the other day from Cigar Prop, how I smoked that whole cigar and it, and it that one was a definitely had a lot more strength than the Macanudo Maduro. Also, I want to mention too, been getting a lot of messages about it. The club right now is on hold. It'll be open back up on the 15th. And this is another one, man. I, I talked to a few people that were in the club, got out of the club. Then they saw this month's box and want to get back in. This is where it's going to pay to be consistent, man. You guys know, know what I say all the time, too. And like I said, I get that everybody has different things going on financially, stuff like that, too. But I see other stuff, too. So we won't get into that subject matter. But um, we got a really big Mars plan, man. So it opens back up on the 15th. Probably. I mean, Anybody that's been in the club will tell you that we're very consistent. Ock is in the club. Mystical's here. Milwaukee P is a, it's a cigar man. It's quite a few people that have been around with us for a while. This isn't a club you got, you're going to want to just jump in and out of, man, because that month or two you jump out might be a month you miss something really crazy or something you don't know. Because like I said, me and James got quite a bit of stuff planned throughout the year, some sprinkled in surprises and stuff. So it's going to pay. We're going to be rewarding people for consistency and being with us and and holding the holding the crew down so it opens back up on the 15th and um we got a really big mars plan i will say that yeah this is a really nice balanced cigar for me really nice balance on it can you tell me what comes in the mystery pack Billy, I, I don't know. You know, like I said, for me, just being transparent with you, I'm not up there with the shop with James and Nick like that. So I don't know what's in. I'm not. I don't know what's involved in the mystery pack. I wish I could tell you, brother, but I don't know. And uh, Chris, I appreciate that too, man. That's it. Uh, you gotta be. You gotta. You gotta stay. Stay consistent and stay with us, man. We are gonna reward consistency. We're gonna reward. You know, hold holding the club down. Jerome, I'm smoking the Robusto. Still going pretty good. Like I said, for me, this reminds me of a Supreme Leaf burn. So you could, if that's a real deal breaker for some people, like I said, off camera is not bothering me. But you could dry box it if you want to, maybe for you know a couple hours or a day at the most, and it probably fix it right up. Like I said, this one didn't come in super wet, like the. Supremely Toros, when I even grabbed it out of the box when I first had, you could just tell it was just very moist. Jerome, I would say so right now. Now, for me so far, I think this is a really good cigar. You guys know me. I like more strength and uh, intensity, and it's not as intense as like uh, – I'll be really interested to see how it compares to this. But so far, yeah, I would say for sure. And what I do like about this cigar, I will definitely keep some in the humidor, is this is going to be a regular production. For the uh, Aganorsa signature accounts, this will be a regular production product. So like the signature selection, it'll be around. It won't just be like a one drop thing. It'll be consistently around. But so far, I'm really enjoying it. It has some nice flavors on it. <laughs> Messi, I appreciate it, man. You know, I don't want you doing that. At least we can do some hot dogs, man. Yeah, yeah, we definitely, like I said, Jesse, I wanted to say that again. We got more people in here, too. If, if you guys don't know already, but we are officially partnered. We are officially added another partner with us, with Robert and Caesar over at Smoke and Lead. So make sure you give them a follow because they'll be doing some different things. They'll, of course, they'll be doing the Black Line monthly unboxing. They'll be doing some different things with, with James and Black Line, too. So definitely give those guys a, a, a support and, some, and a shout out. Like I said, too, it'll break you up from what I kind of do, too. I know a lot of people, you know, call me more of a serious smoker or more like straightforward. Robert and Caesar are kind of on the, the total opposite side of the spectrum. You're going to get more comedy. 
You probably will laugh more. They do longer videos than I do too. So you can kind of knock out the best of both worlds. So definitely go over there and give them some support, man. I think they're within a hundred or 200 of a thousand, man. So who knows? We get them to a thousand. I might end up doing a giveaway for them just for you guys going over there and support them. Like I said, I always pay attention and watch everything. So you just never know. I might peek in on a comment or something if they get over there and pick somebody to send some stuff to. So we'll see. Go ahead and ash this thing. I don't want to get I don't want to get greedy. Unc, what is going on? We got the gold in the building. Uh guys need to partner with an ammo company so we can get hooked with <laughs> Starting to get a little nuttiness now, too, which is not – I like the nuttiness of it. Coco's kind of faded back. Still getting some. Still getting a little wood, some nuttiness. Earth is still kind of there in the underlying flavors, too. All right, let me grab this link so y'all can y'all can follow them. Yeah, this is I, like I said, for me, this is really this. And for me so far, I can tell this is going to be a good anytime cigar. I could smoke this in the this would be really good in the morning. Whenever this is this is this cigar, I'll cover anything. Let me grab this link for you guys so we can uh, help Rob and Caesar out, man. All right, so I'm I'm getting ready to post in the link. This is the uh, that's I just pinned it. That's the link to their channel. So y'all go over there and subscribe up to them. Help those guys. I know they're, they're getting close to a thousand. So go help them guys out. Seventy five dollars was it at the uh, Vegas store? I'm seeing what y'all were talking about. They have some for sale. I trade a box of five fifty six for a cigar. Man, we might have to talk. Appreciate you, Rick G. Appreciate it. Heath, next month's going to be another nice month, too. I, I know you guys will be completely satisfied. Like I said, from time to time, we will uh, we'll pop in maybe an extra cigar. We might do, we did a lighter in January. We've done stickers. We've done cutters. Just kind of all kinds of little, little necks and nicks. So you never know what we have planned. Like I said, this is going to be one of those ones that – we really want to show our appreciation because you guys could be rocking with any other cigar of the month club. There's there's quite a few good clubs out there, you know, that that present strong lineups and competitive price points or rare limited stuff. So there's a lot of clubs out there. So I really appreciate you guys for giving us a look and giving us a shot. Like I said, you know, from it's just me, Nick and James, just honest cigar guys putting our palates up to the test, picking cigars and see what you guys think. I'm going to tell you one thing I can tell about this one, too. I really, I, you know, for me, I would purchase multiple boxes <clears throat> because I would want to see how this thing ages, too. Another thing that a lot of people don't mention or have not mentioned, but I think it is, and it's kind of a testament, HVC, Illusione, a lot of Agonorsis tobacco ages really well, which I don't know because they use a lot of the Corojo 99 varietal, which is the main varietal that came from Cuba. So... And, and everybody, for the most part, knows Cuban tobacco age as well. So I, I also want to know, I, I wonder if there has a, you know, a correlation in, in that playing a role in it, too. Appreciate y'all for subbing up, too, man. Y'all check them out. Well, Chris, yeah, I thought the first month was really good, too. You did get a Padron 90th anniversary in there. That's another thing, too. So what I will say about the club that we run is we might not have, you know, have soup uh you know opus x bbms or whatever or uh fuente and yehos and stuff but what i feel like where we excel at is the price point that we're able to provide so you know over the months we've had the padron 90th anniversary we've had some uh, placentia alma fuerte alma del campo uh some dunbar tobacco and trust 
We've had uh, in Bombay Mayuro, which was a really it's a, not a cheap cigar. We've had the Dominican Big Leaguer Black Line uh, collaboration with me. It's just a lot of stuff. We've had some aged cigars in there. We've had all kinds of things in there. So all different shapes. You're not one. You know, some clubs you'll see and they just you could just tell they're just giving you robustos or the smallest size of cigars. We do Lanceros, Toros, Figurados, whatever. Whatever blend we think is whatever we think is excelling in that blend, that's that's what we're gonna go with. So I kid you not the lighter we uh hundred dollar lighter. <laughs> what cigar do you think is not as good as its reputation? Uh probably like of the bigger line stuff. I think for me, I think Opus X cigars are good. I don't think that they warrant the price that they ask for a lot of their stuff. So you have to take that with a grain of salt. Um, that's not me saying it's a bad cigar. I just think it's an overpriced cigar. I think the fact of it being a Dominican Puro, because when Fuente and them designed it, people said that you couldn't grow a wrapper leaf in the Dominican. So they did. And then, you know, the, the cult following came shortly after that. So I see some of their cigars. I've smoked them. I smoked a BBMF in last year's Cigar Madness Tournament. That's a $100 cigar. Purple Rain goes for $150. I just don't think that they're they're worth that much. For me, if you're going to smoke Fuente stuff, I would always recommend uh, the Añejo lineup. A lot more price, price conscious and a better cigar for me. And this is coming from a guy that really doesn't care for Maduros as much as I used to. But for some reason, I don't know if it's because it's aged in the cognac barrels or not. It's a really good, really good cigar. Cohibas, I would say, are overpriced too. Same thing. I don't think that they're bad cigars, but I think we're paying for the name, people associated with it. So I think that that kind of causes some uh, inflation in the price a little bit. But I don't think that they're bad. But I do think most most cigars for me, I think that they're just a price too high, you know. So Billy, I don't think I've had Don Thomas before. That floral note for me is coming right back in. Now it's really, really starting to get dominant, which I like. The floral and nuttiness is starting to come in now too. So for me, I always would say, say too, if you like Opus X, uh, check out God of Fire Siri B and God of Fire Carlito. The Anniversario is good. It's just very mild. That's To this day, I probably think that's the smoothest retro hill I've ever had on a cigar. But God of Fire Siri B, God of Fire Carlito are very good cigars. See there? $25 to $30 price point, but I think when you smoke them, like I have some Carlito Churchills. I don't smoke them too often, but the, that uh, Cowboy, that's another one too. If you haven't had, you need to get your hands on that too because that God of Fire Carlito has a camera wrapper. It's fantastic. Floralness, nuttiness. The light brown sugar is coming back in. Draws, it's been good. No, no complaints. Appreciate you, Uncle. Yeah, y'all hit the like button or, di or uh, dislike, whatever y'all want to hit. I'm kind of gotten used to getting quite a few <laughs> thumbs downs in some videos recently. But like I was telling somebody the other day, I almost feel weird if I don't get any thumbs down in some videos now. But it is what it is. Make sure y'all smash something. That, like I said, for me too, especially uh I mentioned in streams before. Even if it's not donating to me or anything, like even something as simple as just liking the content. Helps helps me go a long way. It helps helps expand, helps grow. So I appreciate it. I agree, cigar man, for sure. Another cigar I like, uh, the Cohiba Connecticut. But it's just, I think, you know, me and Lee Make have talked about that quite a few times. We both enjoy that cigar, but sitting around $18, $19, $20, I think it's about five to seven. If that cigar was around twelve to thirteen dollars, I think that's the cigar I probably would smoke a lot more often, but at eighteen, nineteen dollars, I'm probably gonna pick up a Davidoff. I'm gonna pick up a Padron. Quite a few things I'm gonna pick up first. <laughs> Mystical. <laughs> Pharaoh, just try with some more milder blends. I don't know what you tried the retro hill at first, and then a lot of a secret about that too. If you haven't checked, or I don't know if you checked out the video I did on it, but sometimes. You have to let out some smoke out your mouth first and then do the retro hill to kind of you don't want to try to retro hill everything out at first. So Brazilian blend, uh, try to get your hands on some CAO uh, Amazon line, anything from the Amazon line. Um, 
the crown heads angels anvil from 2018 or no is it 19 they had a brazilian or rapper 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 on it there's quite a few cigars that's got some brazilian tobacco on it that's pretty good um trying to think off the top of my head amazon basin always comes to mind because it's like those are always really solid Creaminess is starting to come up, come back in there too. So, for people like Ock or people that are into straight up powerhouse cigars, for me so far the Robusto, this isn't a powerhouse cigar. This is going to be more, uh, more gracious, more balanced, more nuanced. Again, like I said earlier, if you smoke this for the first time around, don't pair it with any Coke, Dr Pepper, or anything. Just if you're gonna drink anything, maybe some water, but just try to smoke it in its entirety without pairing it with anything. This isn't really drying my palate out or anything either, so you don't have to worry about anything like this. Getting a really nice floral note on this, though. Really nice. Uh, Billy, you can always email me at uh, mccoy.ronald at gmail.com. M-C-C-O-Y dot ronald at gmail.com. Or you can uh, shoot me a message on Instagram. I'm at 901 underscore run. So far, this is so far. I'm liking it. I don't now. I know. So me and James. So me and James have a lot of similarities in our palettes, but then there's some differences too. Uh, I think James likes this. Is, I'm not surprised that James likes this more. James likes more, and that's the the beautiful thing about cigar smoking. We all have like differences, but there's some happy mediums we could come in. I agree that this is a good cigar. So far for me. I probably would smoke this maybe over the Toro, but I still like the Supreme Leaf Robusto more just because of the flavor intensity. But that kind of goes back to my uh, bourbon background. I like I've always liked three digit. I've always liked higher proof because I feel like I like the higher proof. And if I wanted to dial it back some, I, I had the control of doing it. But I like the richness. I like strength. You know, Jeff can tell you off camera. He'll tell you we'll like uh, his store just we just went through and picked a grander cash strength rum that'll be released here for his store in a couple of months and he'll tell you we were drink, drinking and he's like we'll pass through the rums and he'll he'll tell you like i already know what ron's gonna like because he knows what my palate is clark you smoking you smoking this too this has a really the there the floral the nuttiness and the cocoa note is really good on this though the finish on this is really nice No complaints so far. No, Mr. Go, I think you'll, I think you'll even, I know where your palate is kind of like mine too. I don't think you'll regret, regret blind buying at all. Oh, the mortal core, the new CAO. Yeah. James was telling, I haven't got a chance to smoke that, but, but I'm looking forward to smoking that one too. Cause I'm such a fan. And that's another thing. I think I was telling Gerald from cigar artistry. Oh, you're smoking the CAO. Um, I was telling Gerald from Cigar Artistry, CAO is one of those companies when they want to when they want to dial in and they want to get some stuff, man. Because one of the best, some of the best cigars I've smoked probably in 2020 really were were uh, they came out of the Rick Rodriguez sampler that James offered. He had a special going at one time. If you bought a box of Orellanos or Amazon Basin, they would include the Rick Rodriguez sampler. And some of those, I'm I'm smoking these cigars. I'm like, why are y'all why do y'all not have these on the shelf? These are some of the best cigars I've smoked. I think there were six in the in the sampler. There was only one I really didn't care for. The rest of them were really good. Of course, everybody knows about the CEO. Brasilia, staple in most people's humidors. Most people that are starting out, even starting out, can appreciate this cigar. It's really good. I think you like that sampler, though, because I would say, honestly, I'm not the biggest CAO guy either. But when this stuff is on, they're on. When they are on, they are on. I 
I really like these bands too, man. It's nice. Nice band. No complaints so far. I'm sitting back. This this is probably nah. I don't know. Maybe later on tonight I might smoke through this uh Supreme Leaf Corona Gorda after everybody's in bed. We'll see. But I'm not not mad at picking this up at all. What's the best way to taste flavor notes? For me, I was retro healing, right? So like it's uh kind of one of those things people have mentioned it before too. That's why I'm such a uh such an advocate for it because I feel like if you don't, you miss out on so much of a cigar. You know, like I mentioned before, if you have a head, if you have a head cold or anything like that, or you try to smoke and hold your nose and you realize you can't taste as much. It's because those systems work really well together. So I feel like to get everything out of the uh, cigar, you have to retrohale, too. I think that's a really big proponent. That's So, I mean, it sounds redundant, but. Me smoking cigars before I learned how to retrohale and then just like completely unlocked everything when I started retrohaling. So. Brother Stogie, what's going on, fam? Appreciate you stopping in, man. You guys are doing doing a hell of a job over there on the channel, too. Been been peeping uh, peeping a few of the latest videos y'all been putting out. David, appreciate that donation, man. Jason, just keep trying. And like I said, honestly, if, as long as you're enjoying the cigar, that's really the main thing. Because I don't know the percentage, but I would say probably 70 or 80% of smokers can't or don't retro heal. But... The statement for me, the statement that kind of became synonymous is me saying it about reviewers. I, I've never said it. I've never said it about people smoking in general. Right. I, I sit next to people all day long that don't. But for me, I just I, I know what it personally does for me. It enhances the cigar so much more. Kevin, what's going on, man? Do you have an air purifier? I do. I have a. Um, the Rabbit Air minus A2, they came out with a Rabbit Air minus A3. So the room that I sit in is around 400 square feet, which this, this is rated for like 700 or something. So it does plenty good. Now, what I will say, because shame on me, I never released, a, uh, never reviewed, put out an official review or uh, anything like that. But what I will say to most people that have an uh, air purifier, it works best when you can have fresh air running through too. So... When I first had it, the first week I was using the Rabbit Air, I didn't open any windows and I, and I was just running it on turbo. Well, when I would come in in the morning, it would kill most of the smell, but you still could smell some. It wasn't until I started opening windows while smoking that it kind of kills out the rest of the uh, smell. I still spray some osium or some kind of air neutralizer in here too, but for the most part, it does really well. And it's not bad for me because I'm just usually in here by myself. And the room is pretty big, so it doesn't ever get cloudy or anything like that. But they do have a, a new Rabbit Air Minus A2 that's rated for around a thousand square feet. So I'm assuming it's a bigger, stronger unit. So that's something that I may be trying to reach out to them and talk to them about in the future. Who knows? But uh, so far, I've been pretty satisfied. I've probably had this unit now. Uh, Unc, what do you think? Had this unit now for probably what seven, eight months, maybe. Cubic feet, not square feet. Okay. So that that makes more sense now, Kevin. You saying it. Will you be watching the Great Smoke 2020? Probably not, Rocco. Uh probably not. This is it's gonna be it's gonna time is gonna that's why I was saying in the first part of the stream. You'll probably see more live streams from me kind of popping up, just checking in on you guys. I won't be putting out a whole, whole lot of reviews. We probably put probably got two or three that'll be out. And then still going to uh, review the new new era unit that I got. But we're focusing a lot on Cigar Madness that will start in March. So we got a lot of stuff going. So probably won't be doing a whole lot of re you won't see a whole lot of reviews from me between now and March. But I probably will pop in like this and hit some random live streams and see what everybody's up to. Uh, some advice for growing your channel, Billy. I would just say. Make sure your content is strong and, and be yourself and trust me, the right people, because me and Lee Mac, Kevin, we all look at we it, it just pops up on our streams all the time. We just find new stuff. And, and of course, when I'm sitting around reading or doing something, I'll check out new channels and just let it happen organically. It'll uh, it'll definitely happen. 
How long have you been? How long have you been at it? Val, what's going on? So the back end for me, definitely more nutty and woodiness. Black pepper is there, but it's not really intense. The, the most intense that black pepper was was in that first five or six draws. Like I was saying, it's just been kind of tying everything down. But the flavors on this thing are really balanced and really nice. I think most people are going to really receive this pretty well. Yeah, Billy. So most people, well, a lot of people are new, but for a lot, a lot of people that have been following me for a long time, I did like the standard thing. So I started in September of 19. And I really didn't really, really start. Well, I say that, but I think, I, you know, but I didn't really start really hitting traction until Cigar Madness of last year. So the creativity comes into that and make some content that make content that you I always tell people make content that you yourself will want to watch. For me, that's when the channel really started thriving up until then. I was just doing really trying to focus on really quality reviews and then, you know, doing the typical things, sharing my links on Instagram, Facebook, things like that. And over time, people just kind of start hopping in and it gets to the point now, you know, people just find you. So I think that um, just hang in there, man. Like I say, you're still really fresh at it. Just continue to make uh, good, good content. And then, you know, another, you know, kind of a cheat code, too, that'll kind of help sp uh, spruce things up a little bit. Kind of stay up to date on what Cigar News is, is going out. Uh, stay up to date. Like if you can get your hands on one of uh, the, the rare leaf or the supreme leaf. Certain cigars carry a lot of weight and a lot of traction. So when people so if a, you have, you want to try to find yourself in an algorithm for a person. So if I'm a new person and I'm trying to figure out about the rare leaf, if you smoke the rare leaf and reviewed it, when I go to hit on YouTube, there might not be a lot of reviews out. So if you got one of the only reviews that will make me click on your channel, I like what I see. Then I hit subscribe and I watch all the rest of your stuff, too. So that goes into what I was saying. Make sure you make some good quality content. Make sure your visual. Your visual is important, but make sure your sound is really good. That's first and foremost, because a lot of people will listen and they'll deal with subpar looking stuff if the sound and the content is still good. So I would say uh, emphasis needs to go on your sound. A lot of channels will have content, but the sound might be really bad. Or you go and put it in the car, you listen to your headphones, you have to have it all the way up to barely hear somebody. So make sure your sound is good. Make sure the quality is good. Make sure you're staying honest and make sure you're creative. I think a lot of people... That you'll see that are kind of their channels are kind of stagnating and not doing what they wanting that they think they should be doing. I think that's because the create they lack creativity. So make sure you're creative with things too. Having to come across your channel while looking up a review for Particus Lucentaneous, like the quality and the other cigar reviews I had to check out the stream when I saw it pop up. Appreciate that too, Jason. So that's another thing too, Billy. So. Jason is Jason was looking for Cuban cigar reviews. That may be something that you might want to dabble into as well. I don't know how versed you are in Cuban cigars, but Cubans and anybody will tell you here, Cuban cigars will always do really well because it's a really big following for uh, people that smoke Cuban. So that's another good way to get people to start looking at your channel as well, too. So I'm at an hour now. It's probably Robusto is probably going to run me around an hour, 20 or so. Still really enjoying it. It's not not getting mushy or anything on me, not getting hot. I'll be able to probably nub this thing out. I, I can imagine. So like I said before, take your time when you're smoking. You'll be able to get the flavors. Don't rush through it. Appreciate you, Josh. Congratula early congratulations to you, too, man. Smoking while I was in the Bahamas. Good smoke output, but yeah, really nutty. The floralness has kind of went away, but mostly nuttiness and the woodiness is in there now too for this last third. Really good. I'd be really interested to see how this uh, Corona Gorda stacks up to it. I probably will end up smoking it tonight. It's still kind of early where I'm at, so probably when, it, when I get ready to get everybody down and everybody's in bed, I'll probably come back out here later tonight and enjoy this cigar while I'm doing a little reading, so. That, that comes with the territory too, Billy. I think repetition is another thing too. 
if you go back and look at any any of the channel anybody's channels first videos you could just tell like if you see progression you could just tell you get more comfortable on camera uh you get more confident in your and i always say that too if you're really knowledgeable about your whatever subject matter you're talking about if you know it back and forth side to side and you know the content and you know your material it's almost like a, a, a kid in grade school if you didn't study for a test and then a teacher pops up and says we got a pop test you're gonna be nervous like oh shit, I, I you know damn I'm, I'm not ready for it but if you actually genuinely know the material and you just know it in its entirety it doesn't matter how a person questions you how they ask you about it the answer is going to be the same you know the material so but on that note man i'm a i just want to pop up for a little bit it's been up for an hour i'm gonna sit back and enjoy the rest of this rare leaf it's been really good I, i'm enjoying this one i'll be interested to see i know they did a toro and i believe they did a gordo size but i'm gonna I'm a be interested in that toro i don't know if i'm gonna jump too quick on the gordo i'm not a really big ring gauge guy but i like this one as you guys see the performance has been pretty solid for me flavors are really nice again for me keyword i would say on this balance not super intense not a pepper bomb so keep keep that in mind when you're smoking this is going to be really balanced again i would recommend not pairing this with anything when you're smoke first smoking this because i think you're gonna miss out on some stuff really nice floral notes in here nice gradual tobacco sweetness that morphs kind of into a cocoa get some little slight edge in this is slight periods of cream but hey i'm gonna be in for a box of these for sure i'll be interested to see you guys if you guys pick up boxes or singles or five packs i always like hearing feedback y'all tell me run you're crazy i think the cigar is bad or i think it's a good cigar too so i always like hearing from you guys but on that note man i'm gonna get out of here hopefully you guys have a good rest of your night y'all gotta go to work tomorrow y'all be safe out there take care of your families take care of all your loved ones stay on and stay true y'all know the name of the game is relaxation and enjoyment and don't forget to be driven, never motivated. I will see y'all soon. I love y'all. Y'all take care.